Guys, I'm not paying for Christmas. And you know, it's. Did you just like say Christmas? Nikomo ba? Christmas. Christmas. Oh, and you know, you know, I was Christmas. Christmas. You pay Christmas. I've never known another way to say it. Oh, really? It's Christmas. <laughs> Christmas. Yeah. Yeah, I see from the spelling, I can tell. But <laughs> so you actually know the spelling? <laughs> I know, of course. <laughs> But you go if we go talk with it, for example, it's like if we Christmas. The Christmas. Mm. <laughs> All right, you're welcome to the show. If you're not subscribed, please do subscribe. Hit that bell and share. Jofia here was telling me about a movie where uh, a man's daughter was kidnapped on Christmas. No, not kidnapped, killed. Oh, killed. Yeah, a son actually. Oh, how By did a stray I, bullet. How did I get violence. all the details wrong? Because <laughs> you didn't get any details. <laughs> <laughs> we we'll say focus very Christmas. Very Christmas. <laughs> yeah, so Monday is a political commentary. Uh, Wednesday is uh, the educative segment of the show on Friday Bible talks. So if you are not subscribed please do subscribe, hit that bell and share. The show is available Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays, 20 hours Central African time right here on YouTube. And you can listen to the podcast on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Yeah, I'm here with Mr. Chofaya. How are you doing, sir? I'm good bro and yourself? I'm a blessed young man. Okay. Yeah. I'm just thinking about you actually. Yeah? That you should keep your eyes somewhere. Why? <laughs> <laughs> you know, we might have technicalities. Oh, oh yeah yeah yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh sorry about last week Monday's show which ended so abruptly <laughs> uh due to technical difficulties obviously. This one however uh we well, sure you will not end abruptly we we'll say bye mm-hmm. but the people are happy when we mm-hmm. say bye yeah. and assure them that we'll be back <laughs> yeah and you see that kind of woman oh yeah oh, that woman um <laughs> uh, what does she say again um like what you see like what you see yeah <laughs> uh yeah so last week's show was quite good and today we'll be giving you some updates on some of the uh, discussions we've had in a couple of weeks for example the dog meat incident <laughs> has finally got an update. Yeah, so we are discussing a number of things on the show today. By the way, before we go further, I uh, would like to thank every new subscriber who has come to the channel, to the show. Uh, we are so appreciative of every single subscription, every single like, every single comment. All your engagement is really important to us. It encourages us to keep doing what we're doing knowing that we actually have an audience. Yeah. Uh, I saw a, a, a comment yeah. by by Instagram person. Oh yeah, Instagram blue. It's podcast uh, yeah, <laughs> that, that was TikTok. Uh, oh, TikTok. A podcast yeah, mafi. <laughs> wow. <laughs> we'll br- we are bringing back um our beloved segment Empty Teens Make the Loudest Noise soon and we'll I be reviewing I think we should check that guy's name and, and just we'll be reviewing uh I think we'll put it up on the screen. Uh just <laughs> Yeah, so that was his comment there. I was I couldn't leave that one hanging. So yeah. Uh I think we'll bring back empty teens make yeah. the loudest noise so we can review more comments because now our social media platforms are getting so much engagement. We had 100,000, over 100,000, 120,000 views on Instagram. Wow. Yeah, okay. our, our reach is growing. That's who, like a constituency. Who knew that at my age I would one day <laughs> <laughs> Rich <laughs> for yourself. Me and my age <laughs> and, and and you know we in total we reached about 200,000 people. Okay. If you yeah, compare yeah, all, yeah. all platforms. Okay. So yeah, Lusaka knows us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyway, you're you're welcome to the yeah. show. I hope there's someone from Matero. I hope they see the ones on YouTube the full videos. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. If you are from Matero, YouTube, just put something in the comments so that we know you we'll give you a shout out. Yeah. So we are discussing a number of things on the news today to begin with uh in famous Munyaule market has been raised uh or destroyed. Oh, wow, interesting choice of words there. <laughs> uh then we'll discuss uh Lwapula dog meat seller jailed for 30 months. Um then the Zesco or rather Zesco to implement 8 hours of load shedding daily. 
Finally. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> we were waiting for this. Uh, we, we were impatiently waiting. Uh, once man, we had been <laughs> drought. Zesco's imminent, <coughs> not shedding. <laughs> <laughs> it's finally upon us. <laughs> <laughs> if Zesco had a, if Zesco had a kingdom, we'll be preaching. Re- repent! <laughs> For the kingdom of Zesco is at hand. <laughs> yeah, so Lord yeah. Shedding is back. Yeah. Well, th- 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 those, those are some of the... Oh, did I just... Th- 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's going on. Speaking like someone I met yeah. who didn't want to stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so um, traders are crying foul because uh, Soka City Council and Zambia Police jointly destroyed a a large, a rather large market housing about three thousand or six thousand rather traders. Um, this was done in the middle of the night. Yeah. I would like to assume it was because they were afraid of an uprising. The prophesied uprising by Mr. Lungu was <laughs> to be fulfilled at Munyaule Market. <laughs> and therefore, being so prophetic, <laughs> Lusaka City Council avoided doing it during the day. Uh, the so Lusaka, they avoided the prophecy. Yeah, they avoided the prophecy. Way to go, Mr. Lungu, you prevented an uprising. Is there anything like avoiding a prophecy? Yeah, because some prophecies are conditional. Like, if you, like, if you do this, this mm. will happen. But if you don't, it will not happen. Oh. And then when you do it, it happens. More like fate. Yeah, kind of. Um, oh, yeah, okay, okay. For, for, for the sake. We, for we the don't sake. call it that? No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> you guys catch the Bible Talks every Friday, 20 yes. hours, Yes. right here. <laughs> Bible Talks every Friday. We were just discussing... Um, speaking in tongues. Oh. Yes, yeah, so gifts of the Spirit. So yeah. we were, the last gift we discussed was... Uh, different kinds of tongues. Check that one out. Yeah, so the Lusaka City Council has demolished Mnyaule Market, leaving over 6,000 traders stranded. This has been done to pave way for developments by Kadula, an investor, who entered into a lease agreement of 15 years in 2019 with Lusaka City Council. A combined team of the City Council and Zambia police officers moved in at midnight to demolish the stores. Affected traders have bitterly complained that they were not informed that the demolition would take place for them to remove their items and be given alternative places. In Zambia, we are not necessarily informed of trouble. For example, speed traps in Zambia are actually traps. (laughs) We are not (laughs) always anyway, and until recent times, we've had instances where Policemen are hiding behind a tree in order to trap you. Oh, you're saying until what? Until recent times. Uh, we, no, we, man, we, we now have it. some... Yeah, if you're traveling long distances, they're always hiding. They're always hiding, eh? You're going to the Copper Bay before you reach Ndola. You find about uh, five groups hidden. of people hidden. You know, to be some Maybe road the uh-huh. so, and then there's a block line, or maybe end up a Mwamba <laughs> just behind the tree. <laughs> they wait for someone, even just overtaking. Yeah. Park. Because that's the way uh, things operate in Zambia. They want to shock you, spring up on you, to just like pounce on you in the moment. And you have not prepared the defense. You have not. <laughs> I was one day driving with a friend of mine. Mm. Well, I was in the passenger seat. He was driving. Mm. And we suddenly met the police. He wasn't wearing his belt. Mm-hmm. I always wear my belt when I get into the car. Yeah, so as you should. <laughs> <laughs> as I should. And... Guess what he told the police? Mm. Ah, sin <laughs> 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 Yeah, so, you know, I think now, since we are talking about this, it kind of makes sense because uh, it's going to step into just because we are Antoine Langan. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm. And, you know, this is something that's in our culture. Ka? We yeah. grew up with it. When your parents are around, you won't do things that you'll be doing when they're out. Uh-uh. Yeah, so maybe the, what the police do is good. They are saving lives. <laughs> yeah. Keeping keeping the culture. We are maintaining Zambian culture. <laughs> the culture of shocks. So these guys went into the market at midnight to demolish. This raises two questions for me. Firstly, could there have been an alternative to to this? Was there a way of successfully migrating the businesses to a different place or encouraging them at least not to trade from there? That's firstly. Secondly, uh, does this demonstrate any form of care for the citizens when you 
destroy not only what houses their business, but you destroy their business along with it. Yeah. Does this, as a leadership, demonstrate any form of empathy? Are you putting yourself amongst the citizens or you are now raising yourself above the citizens in order to shock them? Yeah, mm. that's... Th yeah, those are two important questions. I guess they're rhetorical. Yeah. But I'll attempt to respond to them. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. definitely. So the first you spoke about was there another way of doing it? Maybe to relocate them, I'm guessing that's what you're mm, thinking. Mm. Yeah. Uh, that's difficult to say. Yeah. Because of what happened. There was force used and uh, people are not relocated. So it's hard to say right now. Uh, also because this thing has been going on for a very long time. Yeah. The place where they were, it's an illegal market. We'll get into that. Uh, but this thing has been going on for a long time. There was actually a court case mm. and an order was actually given. Okay. Yeah. So uh, it's hard to say because these people were not willing to move. Yeah. Yeah. So it's hard to say if this would have been dealt with in another way. Any differently. Yeah. Then the other, okay, does this, <clears throat> does this uh, show the empathy that our leaders have? Yeah. No. Because the first thing is that, uh, of course, we can't run away from the fact that there are livelihoods that were destroyed. Yeah. By the way, I, I did some dealings there in Munyaole Market. Yeah. I actually knew uh, a few people who are trading there. Okay. Yeah. So I've been there several times. Yeah. So the first thing I should mention is like, is that it's, it's a dilapidated place. It was a dilapidated place. Yeah. It wasn't even fit. For for the kind of business that was done there, mm -hmm. of were course, they selling food? Yes. Within so yes. would that also be a, a place where cholera would come from? Yes, because the other thing is that it's built quite right on top of a drainage system. Ah, okay. Which drainage system is very bad? Yeah. Yeah. So you could be right, yeah. but there are other people who are selling phones, laptops, uh, clothes, bags, shoes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and apparently, or oh, they just went there to to destroy everything. Yeah. Without informing the people. So the second part about empathy, to me, I think that these guys should have been informed Yeah. before the police and the OCC went in. But then you spoke about something in the st um, when you were starting that uh, maybe the police avoided to do that because uh, this was the prophetic uprising. The, the, the by prophesied. <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> prophesied. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that could be a point. But then to me, it doesn't really hold water because, of course, some people are saying that. Uh, including the people from the police as well. Mm. They are saying that if we inform them to say, yeah. they'll be there mm. and there'll be an uprising. Some of them will say that with sticks and stones won't break my bones. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you know, yeah. uh, if we have a police that is trained worth its sort to handle crowds, we yeah. could have done it even uh, by informing them first. Mm. Because you know the problem with that is on is that as you said you don't only uh, destroy the, the 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 thing that houses their businesses yeah. but you destroy those businesses as well those yeah. livelihoods oh, people uh, lost just drink from your cup so the people can see your cup <laughs> <laughs> yes sir catch on isn't mine shan 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 aha go on <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so to me, it's not an excuse that uh, we did this because we thought that they would riot or anything. Yeah, it, it, it's understandable, yes, but it is not, if police are trained and we say that they are with their sort, they should have gone there and managed the crowd. Mm. Yeah, because it's important that these people uh, take out their, their merchandise. Yeah. Because they destroyed a lot of stuff. Yeah. And people were actually stealing. Yeah. Because people take advantage. People started businesses. Yeah, on, exactly. <laughs> on the premise yeah, of actually, this. someone told me something <laughs> that, you know, because they were called, some of them were called to say, oh, Vambo mm -hmm. Most mm -hmm. of them, mm -hmm. actually. Mm -hmm. because, but there are some who are unfortunate. Like, I know one guy whose phone was off and they couldn't reach him. Yeah. yeah. So does this mean everyone leaves their stuff there when they knock off? Yes, because there's some sort of a security system. Okay. Yeah, okay. because it's very near city market anyway. We'll talk more about that. Okay. Yeah, but anyway, what I wanted to say is that... Uh, at some point, the guys went and they were getting their stuff from there and going, road. you know you know where it's going, right? Yeah, then he <laughs> fails to locate where he left the other one. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> yeah. So it was quite devastating for them and I can only imagine because those are livelihoods at the end of the day. By the way, you know, that's not a problem in Dubai, surprisingly, because they have like a 0% crime rate. Oh, crime, yeah, yeah, I hate that. So like you, you leave your stuff on the road and go and pick up other stuff, you'll find it. Yeah. 
civilized yeah. societies. Eh? <laughs> oh, wow, well, there are some areas yeah. where they're not civilized, but in, anyway. Yeah, 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 we can talk much about Dubai. You know, Dubai is like another beast on its own. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. So that's my thought about this. Uh, we can, we, I can talk more maybe I think we after. just had an awkward, silent moment there. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> so to break it, you just say, ah, <laughs> Yeah, so um, we, we, we have uh, a couple of uh, clips to show you of the traders uh, speaking out their minds. O- obviously, we know that, you know, when you take such drastic measures, um, you're going to leave people heartbroken. You're going to leave people heartbroken. You're going to leave people without a plan. People are not going to know what next to do. Exactly. Especially if uh, some of them are in debt. Uh, some of them got into debt to start the business. Mm-hmm. And this springs upon them suddenly. You can imagine the funerals that are going on in people's homes right now mm. uh, on the basis of the method as to whether they could have done it alternatively. I guess that's up for debate. Mm. Uh, it does not dispute the fact that this has left people in a very bad place and also could lead to crime. Yeah. We, I don't like to admit to this, but the video we're about to show you, I like the man's points because, you know, I always support the idea of people not always crying out. The government is not creating jobs, but they themselves should in, be ingenious to be able to create jobs for themselves. Anyway, check it out. <laughs> Katu kateka wesu for three children. As you can see, me in a pona ambilancha wombago pumuntu. I started business here. Fine. I'm a support person. I'm on survive the fine. No man has survived a shark. What has been done? President Bakesa Kungan, the Bakesa and Perez Jaguda. All of my star will win. None can win. The cancer will win. I think he does have a point in that he was already in the situation. I mean, uh, debating on whether it was right for them to be selling from where they were selling and the conditions of the market is a whole different case. But we're talking about people who are already conducting business. They have already formulated a livelihood. I think in order to shift them from there, you must have thought of ways in which you are going to maintain their livelihood. Uh, Because this is something that has the potential to kill people. This is something that has the potential to put people in 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 hunger. I, I don't know what you think. Yeah, that's true. And this gentleman mentioned that uh, he's living with a disability. Yeah. Yeah. So you see, this kind of uh, gives you the the picture of the the effect that this has on the livelihoods of people. Yeah. Because also it looks like he's a family man who's uh, taking care of people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. You know, you, you don't only affect him, but you also affect the other people. Mm. Yeah, some of them indirectly and many of them directly. Yeah. Yeah, so it, it's it's a big issue. And uh, speaking about the alternative, uh, we, I heard that uh, because the government has been singing about the the Simon Mwelen market. Yeah. Yeah, they've been singing about that. And by the way, the person who's coming there, apparently they are coming to be the market. Okay. A modern market. Oh, okay. Yeah. But this is a private company, of course. Yeah. And I hear that it's actually a foreign company. Yeah. So, you know, it looks all types of ways. When you say Which that. might not make it necessarily the easiest of things for local marketeers to have access to. Yes, that too. Yeah. Plus just the picture that it paints that, you know, you, you break. By the way, we should make it clear that uh, these were not well-established shops, so to say. They were yeah, not yeah. well-established yeah, yeah. structures. Tuntemba. Yes, Utushido. Yes, yeah. <laughs> to see do, exactly. Eh, ototu ino to adimuna no mbotu ingi pamopene. Yeah. Imidadada. Exactly. Shatu see do. Yeah. Is that so correct? Ima- <laughs> something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Imidadada shatu see do. Yeah, something like that. Eh, yeah. <laughs> mwashai, <laughs> nae? Yeah, it's not easy. <laughs> but we are managing. Yeah. Yeah. So imagine how it looks on the part of the authorities that you take people who are, most of these people are poor. Yes, so to say. You take uh, poor people out, hmm. and then you bring now someone who's got a lot of money, a foreign national, yeah. to come and take advantage of that place. 
Yeah. yeah, so you know it, it 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 looks some type of way. Is this what the vice president means when she says reducing to increase? Oh, sorry, is it increase to reduce? <laughs> you always get that, bro. <laughs> or maybe it's an act. <laughs> it's like a uh, what do, what do they call it? Where you say the opposite when you actually mean the opposite? Uh, <laughs> it's boy. like they are saying they are reducing to increase. Oh, sorry, they are they're increasing, increasing to reduce. reduce. <laughs> when in fact things are working the opposite. Yeah. <laughs> like oh, this a few was reduced last month in order to increase. It next month. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you know, I think that also there's there's an issue of uh, space for marketeers or people who are doing business in town, traders. Mm. Yeah, because we know that we have now a lot of people trying to do business. This is why we have got street vendors. This is why all the markets are apparently full. Yeah. Yeah. So probably we need more space. It's time now to build more markets. Yeah. Build more markets. Develop infrastructure. Yeah. Uh, let us develop our local ability mm-hmm. to be able to eat. Uh, I think this is something I've said countless times on the show, that the government should somehow help the people eat. It's very important. If people are actually able to eat, they'll be more productive. Because if you consistently work for food, that's where all your money goes. You become very unproductive. And you will complain whenever the government has to make a move that seems to not favor you. Because the first thing you're thinking about is how will I eat? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so uh, some more marketeers had a number of things to say, uh, some of whom spoke in diverse kinds of tongues. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's just simple as <laughs> Check it out. That guy in the back doesn't look like he'll be hungry. Anyway, do you guys have oh. do you guys have Nikwisa Ningaya by Adonai? I would like to you okay. know the you know the song? Do, do you guys know it? Uh, I no, no, I just want to play it as you're talking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that would be cool. <laughs> Good theme song for the video we just watched. You okay. know, Zambians cool. are, cool. yeah, it that was, eh? cool, yeah. <laughs> you know, Zambians are Christians when calamity befalls them. By the way, I know Zambians can pray, eh? Yeah, I just want just a few observations there. Don't take it too seriously. Mm. Why do they always cry on camera? Like, you know, <laughs> crying is something, yes, but you could cry before you go to the yeah, car. Yeah, so that you have released all, <laughs> yeah, your, all yeah. your sorrow. But I see this a lot of times. Even politicians, they like Yeah, even Simon Moore cries. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, there's an arms attack. <laughs> I think I saw that. See how one made him cry. Yeah. Oh, see how one made him cry. <laughs> the guy about, is a crier. When he talked about deportation from the United States, see how, <laughs> oh. one, see how one revealed it to the public. It was a hidden secret. The guy is just a crier. Eh? Uh, he, yeah. he was quite bitter. Yeah. Yeah. Then the last woman, ironically, wearing a red shirt. Fixing in, eh? Okay. <laughs> ah, you know she's about to go and get four NRCs to do four votes from the four different constituencies. <laughs> and they are bitter, they are hurting. Hey, that's something else. Those are very strong words. Yeah. Anyway, let me now give my objective uh, comment on that before yeah. we, we see we see what Membe said about it. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, this was an illegality. Mm. What was happening at Mnyaule Market? The way this illegality started, it happened, it started way back in yeah. the MMD time. Yeah, so as much as we are placing the blame on the incumbent, the government that's in, uh, in place right now, the UPND government, uh, of course, they deserve a bit of some blame as well because they are the leaders. They are the ones who are there now. They should have known how to do it in a better way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it started way back, I think in 2005 or six. Mm. When it started, that place, there were just a few shacks that were uh, done there as a storage facility okay. for people who are trading in city markets and some other markets around there. So people started building more shacks there for the so-called storage facilities, and that was allowed. And they, they started, they went on, they went on, they went on until they filled up the whole place. 
Mm-hmm. After that, it was already at a time where people had already set shops there. So it wasn't now only, say, uh, storage facilities, but then there were shops there. So uh, at the time that it got so bad, this was the time that also we were sort of changing governments. So, you know, PF with Sata, they came up, they came with this pro poor thing, you know, this pro poor message. Like, More money you know, in your pockets. Exactly. So mm. street vendors, it, karami so many sha, the market, do call that your market. So mm. the PF, because that was a populist decision, they continued. Yes. And then they, they set up a fully fledged market there. And those guys actually were paying levies. Mm, yes. The council. Yes. Mm. So it got that bad that it was an illegality that was uh, sort of legitimized. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so to me, I think that this is a lesson mm. because it got worse. This is why we're talking about it because it got worse. Mm. People now started depending on it. Mm. So to me, the message is that for the politicians, exact, uh, especially, you know, we shouldn't continue massaging illegalities. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. if we continue, we we'll end up with such situations. Yeah. And you know, for politicians, they will take advantage of this. So this is why we are seeing politicians in the opposition <laughs> saying that these guys are heartless. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Of which we might say that maybe the way that they did it, they should have done it better. Mm. But it was supposed to be done. Yeah. Either way. To, to be honest, I I, I do agree with you mm. on many levels on the fact that this was inevitable. Yeah. At one point, should the country genuinely develop, then people have to leave such positions. Mm. Street vendors have to have found a place to go and such mushrooming markets should mm. be dealt with at yeah. some point yeah. if a country is to truly develop. Mm. The challenge is, as, as Chofia says, when you massage a, an, an, illegality. an illegality mm. and you allow it to grow to an extent that you are now dealing with people's livelihoods. You are affecting people in the thousands mm-hmm. because you allowed a few shops to become mm-hmm. a whole market. Exactly. What you may then need to do is architecture, sit down and plan. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, how are we going to make the impact as less as possible? Mm-hmm. You know how excited the police get once they are told they mm-hmm. have the right to beat <laughs> or to break stuff? <laughs> no, to be honest, we have seen... Yeah. Uh, so I think there is there was a there was some we've had a lot of time to think about this. Yeah. We have had different administrations to think about this. A plan should have been formulated of a proper migration system even if they were going to destroy stuff. Mm-hmm. There should have been a readily available place mm-hmm. rather than a planned place mm. for people to go to. Anyway, sure. uh Mr. Membe for the first time at least for me uh, speak some sense. <laughs> I, I was actually impressed by what he said. <laughs> Take a look. Good leaders uh, should be able to feel the stress of their fellow citizens. You cannot deprive a citizen of a source of livelihood without a replacement or an alternative given to them. There is no alternative given to them. Those marketeers lost money. They had assets there. They had investments there. Their capital was there. It was destroyed. They don't have another source of income. And there are over 1,000 of them. Under these very harsh conditions, as you have stated yourself, it's heartless. These are people who don't care about other other people. They simply care about themselves. Okay, maybe he went a little too far, but yeah, we get the breath with which he was speaking. Uh, (laughs) We wouldn't necessarily say that the leadership does not care about the people, but what they did is a reflection of a lack of empathy. I wouldn't say they don't have empathy. It just reflects that. So, of course, it may have been with a heavy heart that they had to deliver such um, a task upon, I want, upon I want the to market. That, by the way. Yeah, it, it was obviously with a heavy heart. Um, but we can't also deny what it will leave people thinking. I mean, Mm -hmm. people are crying. Of course, we can't. Yeah, people are crying. So (laughs) it requires a lot of wisdom to deal with issues that you have allowed to grow that big. Yeah, because also we should understand that majority of these people are people who are less informed. Yeah. So, you know, there are some people who thought that this case is still in court. Yeah. Yeah. 
people who are there they were thinking about nkani kari koti mabopwanya when there was an actually a code yeah, yeah yeah so yeah, it's it's i don't know what we something. can what we can do about it's that quite though. something the perception that it gives up I, i don't know what we can do about that the fact that people are generally unaware mm-hmm. of all these technical issues mm-hmm. i don't know whether it's an education issue like we need to i i don't know to me it's a simple thing mm. just go there to the market and tell them Mm. you can go with a megaphone mm. and tell them mm. to say you guys if you didn't know in kani nasira court there's an order to demolish this place uh, and all, we are coming actually, to demolish tomorrow that's that's true there's actually always a way to communicate to the mm. masses mm. there's actually always a way to communicate yeah. to the masses mm. yeah that's right that's yeah. a, that's a good point mr yes. Jafaya. <laughs> thank you <laughs> in material people might not have known about the, the the cholera vaccine yeah but we had people passing around Azmai azibambo perekane wana wano imwe mamene muzipereke mutenge vaccine and then, and then and people showed up and then my batteries yo sida na magiza <laughs> tigula tigula <laughs> 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 yep so um it was quite unfortunate we sympathize with the families of those that are heavily hit by yeah. this move by the government and we also sure do hope that if they have gone as far as demolishing the market then they should once and for all deal with this issue mm-hmm. so that we don't have to come back here and give you some more content <laughs> about how they've demolished the same market yeah a couple of months from now <laughs> yeah so <laughs> anyway moving on uh dog meat has um it's a serious issue in the country it's not just a lusaka thing apparently um man jailed for 30 months for selling dog meat Chelenge magistrate court has sentenced a 34 year old man to 30 months in prison with hard labor for selling dog meat to unsuspecting residents on the pretext that it was goat meat particulars of the of, of the offense are that malama last month on february 20 in chelenge did sell or advertise food namely dog meat in a manner that was false misleading or deceptive as regards character nature value substance quality composition merit or safety i really do appreciate how they reported this i think this was this is professional reporting daily mail i i like the fact that they broke it down maybe this was the court that broke it down like that yeah, to, to, I guess to so. talk about intention yeah of yeah, course yeah, so daily mail sorry for giving you credit where it's not due but <laughs> sorry <laughs> we've given credit where it's not due but, yeah, but that was well 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 explained um well, the, we should give them credit for explaining it like that Yeah, we will exactly give you, we give you credit for it. for explaining accurately. Accurately the yeah. way the court the, the way they yeah. <laughs> you you reported that quite accurately. And mm. um the the dog meat. For me it's the sound. Can you hear the sound? Can you hear the sound? <laughs> some well spiced <laughs> dog meat in his nzakama bambi that looks like a place where men not jira put it so so i will not allow you yeah, yeah, to not. tarnish our name <laughs> apparently it's quite fatty it's on the fatty side dog meat <laughs> yeah and i think ni kanyama gabu ino maninga i one thing they never tell us is that it doesn't taste nice <laughs> yeah. Yeah, of course. They tell us well, everything, but <laughs> you notice even the things that they listed there, right? Uh-huh. They talked about uh, character, nature, value, substance, mm, quality, composition, what? merit, mm. safety, force, misleading, mm. not taste. <laughs> they did not mention taste, uh, not once. So you can judge that. Can taste can go table. Yeah, the taste may not necessarily be <laughs> the worst. <laughs> yeah. You see there was a strong <laughs> argument and uh, One of these shows you guys I, I I now feel like I can't mention my my Red Hot Breakfast show on Hot FM now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so on this show that I listened to there was an argument yeah. between the two presenters, you know. The other guy was saying, "Ah, they, they, they should just be a fine, you know. 30 months is too much. You know, dog meat is just meat." <laughs> and I sort of agree that you know okay you know the, the bad part is that you're misinforming people. Yeah. I think yeah. the the same would probably apply if you sold uh, a lion or a snake mm-hmm. or whatever meat is unconventional to be mm-hmm. eaten at least in our culture mm-hmm. you would probably the fact that yeah 
that's why I liked how they reported it. Mm-hmm. When they talk about misleading mm-hmm. on, and they specify what the misleading is. Yeah. Composition, the nature, mm-hmm. you know, all those things, except the taste. All, <laughs> all those things are listed because. <laughs> the taste is better than the actual good. <laughs> I know. Because cause that's what substantiates. That's what gives weight to the to the, the 30 months. The mm-hmm. fact that it was, it's not on the premise of him having sold dog meat. Mm-hmm. It's on the premise of him having deceived. Mm-hmm. That's why the, 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 the consumers are always called unsuspecting mm-hmm. because <laughs> they, they had no, no idea that the meat they were so gladly enjoying was indeed Scooby or is it Tiger? <laughs> yeah, anyway, my point, my point is that I think I've talked too much on this show today. Oh, really? <laughs> It's, it's very important. <laughs> very important. Eh? My point is that in my kind of taste, taste, I like food. So, cat yeah. dog, I think. Can't have fungo cat taste. Yes, yes. That's what Yeah. Mm. So, cat dog means can't have fungo cat taste. That coche, honestly. For science. Yeah, it has to know it tastes. Yeah, yeah but of course it has to go through the other tests, just like the other animals. <laughs> 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 well, yeah, because unga pezo wa jaga nimka imba karibis ka. Yeah, and I think there is it's the dangers. The dogs, the diseases rather, mm-hmm. and health health issues that dogs may be prone to mm-hmm. are not fully and well studied, yeah. given that we don't consume them like that. So mm-hmm. if there was an anthrax amongst the dog community that we don't know about, mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. that maybe manifests in the way the dog barks. Like there are, there are those things you may not notice, like the dog is barking differently, maybe it's tired or... Can't she say ka, it's like an anthrax, <laughs> which is within the dog community. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then you eat that dog. <laughs> and then at night you begin having dreams. So yeah. <laughs> yeah even better. Or maybe at night you go and meet with the Lord. <laughs> yeah. You, you begin having dreams that uh, define your next phase of life <laughs> where you have left the earth and whatnot. <laughs> <laughs> and whatnot. <laughs> Okay, after that, we can't determine whether you've gone to heaven or hell. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, uh, what am I doing? I'm pushing on you. You're Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah, I think we can just end it there. Yeah, it's been a great conversation. Yeah, it's been a Upon us, as we said, <laughs> the kingdom of Zesco is at hand mm. with their imminent Lord Shedding. Um, ah, what's mm. going on? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, just, just not in our locality. <coughs> uh, where we are shooting from, that is. <laughs> 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 yeah, so um, this decision comes carefully considered after looking at the water. I think I must have skipped a slide or something. Yeah, just this decision comes carefully considered after looking at the water levels both on the Zambezi Basin and the Kafio Basin, which are the two major rivers where power generation takes place, Mr. Mapani said. He said El Nino has had a negative impact on water levels, hence leading to load management. Mr. Mapani said also said due to El Nino, Kariba, which allocates um, supply to Zambia and Zimbabwe, has been declining leading to the power as allocation of only 16 billion per cubic meters this year uh, compared to 30 billion in 2023 and 40 billion in 2024. What are they saying? <laughs> this, is this supposed to be 2024? Uh, he, he added that the country will also claw back on exporting to bilateral agreements, uh, agreement countries, and also to some extent continue to import from Mozambique. Oh, so you, those are the allocations, eh? Yeah, the the they are just the thirty billion and forty billion. Uh-huh. Yeah, so he's saying that uh, the power allocation of we we have a leading to a power loc- allocation of sixteen billion, mm-hmm. uh, as opposed to thirty billion in twenty twenty three and forty billion in twenty twenty four. So I think t- mm. the forty billion should be a different year. Mm-hmm. If if yeah yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So uh, I like the name El Nino. It, Almost makes it sound cool oh. <laughs> that we have no rains. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've had this El Nino effect for quite a while now. Yeah, which means why do we just react palast? Because it's eight hours of load shedding. Yeah. It's, that's something uh, else. To, because, to be, you know, be people's livelihoods now <laughs> will be... 
And we're not talking about illegal people. No, 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 no. We're talking <laughs> about people who are doing actual work. People who are doing welding. People who are fixing people's computers. Guys, welcome, who are shooting welcome videos. to Zambia. Because... Why do we wait for it to get to eight hours? <laughs> wow. First, because the weather forecast was there. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, Mr. Mapani is the Zesco boss. Should be yeah. the DJ or something. Do they have a DJ or a CEO? Okay. It's a, I think it's a DJ. Ah, I'm not sure. Mm. So that's Mr. Mapani. <sighs> you see, we shouldn't even, he shouldn't even be proud that uh, the Zesco boss is coming out to tell us. Yeah, to because they are saying that, uh, no, they are trying to make us feel nice or f they are trying to make themselves sleep better at night by saying, we are trying to hit this before it hits us. We've already observed the levels. So we want to start in advance so, so that later in the year, we shouldn't have more hours. So what if it hits us? Now? Yeah. What are you, are you hearing what these guys are saying? <laughs> like, honestly speaking, I honestly suspect even if it rained for the next five months, they will find an excuse. Yeah. I, yeah. honest, I honestly think so. So my, like, my, my saloon was actually the point. Guys, think about no, it. Like, think about it. You are putting people in a bad place. Number mm. one, you have destroyed one of the biggest markets you see? in Lusaka. Uh -huh. After that, mm. people who then will want to say, okay, let me maybe open a saloon in my home, will now have eight hours of load shedding. Mm -hmm. Just think about that. Yeah. How you have not thought of alter alternatives all this long. And I like the suggestion Gary Nkombo said, I don't have the facts around it, mm -hmm. but uh, him being in the position of government that he is, he should have his facts, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> At least we hope so. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't know if you, if you were privy to this video, but you take a look. The distance between Chembe River and Kafue River is not exceeding 150 kilometers. Plaque a canal there fill the Kafue River with water, it will flow all the way to this dam here, and then it will go and generate power. Yeah. It is simple. Yeah. Make a canal to connect Chembe River, which draws water from Luapula River, so that as a what now we can say, we all contribute. <laughs> this guy, by the way, he was in opposition when he was saying this. Yeah. Yeah. Because also you can even tell from how charismatic he is. Gary Combo is no longer this charismatic. Yeah, he's not. He's, he wasn't getting that. Yeah. The, the, and the if hefty. anyone is watching this, just cut out this part and take it to Gary Combo. Sir, Mr. Gary Combo, you've been a disappointment. Now that you're you getting are, a salary. Yeah, anyway. You are so courageous. <laughs> we thought you are the leaders that would take this country forward. Literally, of course. Mm. But look at what you're doing now. The way he was speaking now, this this shows you that politicians are politicians than they're politic. Yeah. Garin Komba has been the minister of local government and now they've been there for two years and mm. six months plus. Now we have this load shed in eight hours. Yes, I'm a PF. In fact, we have a PF. By oh, yeah. them, PF said two hours? Yes, <laughs> by the time they've got eight hours, Nishi Endosi. Okay, but but PF. Manja wa kuti mimi ni achi na eight hours. I know. Uh, guess guess what Mr. Nkombo was doing this whole time while they were supposed to make a plan. He was making families drink kachaso. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but let's actually digress a little. Yeah. Mr. Nkombo did this in Lusaka. I think that uh, Countess uh, no 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 Chainda or something. Mm. If you go to Mazabuga, yeah. his constituents. Yeah. That is happening a lot. Actually, what, I think what? there are more people making kachasu in Mazabuka uh -uh. than where he went there. Uh -uh. Yes. Serious? Yes. Hey. Anyway, we've digressed. But anyway, I want to say that these leaders, this is a socialism. We thought this is courage. This is char They are being charismatic. Mm. But now we know it's a socialism. Mm. He was speaking very well. It is simple. What you do is create a canal. Yeah. Why can't they do it now? I know, Mr. Nkombo, you are playing so Joe with our hearts. <laughs> you see, mm. so this is the level of uh, political discourse that we have, and this is on the floor of parliament. Mm. This is a representative of a this is a representative of a constituents. Mm. So uh, this is our these are our politicians. And to be honest, even me, I thought that this guy was a great guy. You know, he was speaking so well. Yeah, because like, what, what he said in this video, not, notwithstanding, is a brilliant idea yes, if so, you actually think about yes, it. Yes, so why can't they do it now? Yeah. Because the other thing that he talked about on this floor of parliament that they failed to do is that they said they are going into Forest 27, is it Forest 27? Yeah, yeah. And they'll go with bulldozers there once they are in government. Yeah. Today, those places are still standing and they are quiet about it. <laughs> There's been politics there. So this, I know what you're, <laughs> yeah. I, well, I know what you're talking about, yeah. but it shows you the level of political discourse that we have. Mm. Sensationalism. That is uh, nothing, that's a nothing bigger. Yeah. Yeah. The, the comment I almost made, mm. 
quite inappropriate. But anyway, so Mr. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Nkombo, we, we don't know what's happening. <laughs> Honestly speaking, if you could rehash these ideas, mm -hmm. it would really help the country if we did not have these eight hours of load shedding. Mm -hmm. It would do us a lot of good. I mean, right now, nothing has been made easy by reason of the government nothing mm. everything that's easy in people's lives has nothing to do with the government mm. trust me i'm a citizen so you speaking this way was nice when you're in, in opposition mm -hmm. but would appreciate it now yes because now we need the power yeah yes we, upper man you see you see this is why you keep on telling us uh, you need to do something for yourself no uh party after party is done now it's work <laughs> after work but uh, so what do you expect now yeah Sp speaking of party after party <laughs> he gave a speech in diverse kinds of tongues <laughs> Tatuna kuli bamba kore la kuijiri Tuwa ya mchilanga Tuwa sebe zaburiyo Ntuwa kajila government Two years, six months Tuwa kala buriyo two years, six months Aza mape yu wansi areza nda Wah, leza Saa nda visha hika hii Saa nda visha hika hii Mr. Joffe, you have to give us the interpretation of tongues. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm reliably informed, first of all, that this is not actual Tonga. This is Lenje that they were speaking, okay. that he was speaking. Okay. Yeah. So, of course, it's quite clear, you know, even if you don't get it, you yeah, can get yeah, the context. The context, yeah. Yeah, like, you know, we just came into government and we've been there two years, six months, and we've had all these problems. We came from COVID immediately. We went into cholera. <laughs> cholera, we had Bosida. We had the Jiranga, which is a, a drought. A drought. Yeah. So, and then he say, he goes on to say, uh, God, what did I do wrong? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, when a leader starts speaking like this, you know that we're in deep trouble. <laughs> um, before, before, you know what? Before we, we tell you what the problems really are, Miss Nawakwi said it best. I want to tell him that when he stands up and says, God, what have I done? I am only in office for two and a half years. There's drought. There's COVID. There's cholera. When the leaders are evil, God punishes even the community. He needs to bow down and pray to his God that, God, what have I done? Is it right to graze your animals on dead people's bones? Is it right? for you as a head of state to deprive large communities in, in a mean way of grazing land because you are the president. Is it right that every week Hakainde should fly with our helicopter to his ranch using my fuel, your fuel, when people are dying at this UTH? God is looking. Is it right for him to give Vedanta, a bankrupt company, our minerals? Isn't this the woman who threatened people with a knife just... Actually, that's why she's in court. No, no. Oh, yeah, yeah. She's, she's, <laughs> she's at the premises of the court right now. <laughs> Speaking on issues of threatening people <laughs> with knives, yeah. Mrs. Nawakwi stands in the position of a spiritual leader. She still nation. claims she's innocent, though. She still claims she's innocent. Which I feel like she's she's actually going to be cited for contempt. Because she speaks she keeps on speaking about it after after the sessions. Ah. Yeah. yeah so it's it's quite unfortunate that Mrs. Nawakwi would go to the extent of saying we don't have rains and we experienced COVID, which by the way was a global issue, uh, because HH is evil. <laughs> so <laughs> I was waiting for that interpretation. Wait, does it mean that uh, she's saying that our president HH is so evil? that God is making us, the community of HH, suffer. Yeah, because it's it's a bit hard. The doctrine there, I, I think Mrs. Nawaki really needs to watch Bible talks. <laughs> yeah, she does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because yeah. We're, we're quite shocked with the comments. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, commenting on what she just said. Uh, of course, the way she said it, it's uh, something else. So I'll start with the good things that I picked up from here. Yeah. I don't think they are good, but they are things worthy to be noted. Yeah. So she spoke about the president having to use our chopper mm. every week yeah. to go to his ranch. 
I mean, for a country that is in trouble mm. economically, we need austerity measures and that is unnecessary. Yeah. I'm not saying that that's what it does. Yeah. Which I also feel like it doesn't do that because uh, mostly when it goes there, we see it takes pictures and everything. Mm. I don't mm. think it does that every week. Yeah, I think uh, politicians tend to exaggerate a little bit. Uh, we can also see from Mr. Membe's comments himself mm -hmm. that he started well, and then yeah. <laughs> did it. <laughs> and then the second thing she spoke about uh, giving them that mind back to Vedanta, which is bankrupt. I don't, you know, she 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 makes points and then she messes them. Up. Yeah, these comments sound a lot like a bitter person that is responding to. Mm. Mr. Hichilema's comments on one sausage and beans. Do you remember <laughs> him saying what goes well with Legana? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she wasn't too amused <laughs> yeah. by those comments. Yeah, plus, uh, you know, these people have a so, sort of uh, beef, you know? Yeah. Yeah, because this Nawako, so she brought out a lot of stuff. Yeah. You know, because we've always known HH to be this smart guy who who's done his business well. Yeah. He's been very honest. But then she brought, she brings about some issues that some, some revelations. Yeah, Lima Bank and all those things. Well, in and fact, how, she was the one signing. And now we acquired some of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she was the one signing. Yeah, because no, yeah, she was the minister she, of finance. Finance. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. And so she could know the truth. She could know the truth, but yeah. it could implicate her. That's yeah. the thing. So you know, uh, sometimes when people are speaking out of anger and bitterness, they tend to indirectly stab themselves and they also tend to forget their own sins. I mean, you are speaking at the door of a courthouse <laughs> because you threaten people and then you cite <laughs> similar issues saying, no, God is punishing the people of Zambia because your, your, your president is not allowing cows to graze. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, and your president's cows are grazing on uh, people's dead, De bones. dead bones. Whatever that means. Yeah, whatever that means. Yeah, that's a bit of a disturbing statement. Yeah. But whatever that means. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, uh, so what I was saying is that she says some things that uh, might demand that we look at them, but then the way she closes, you know, it's, it's like she's lying. Every day the HS flies with our helicopter. Yeah. Or every week, she said. Every the week, HS yeah. flies with our helicopter using our fuel. Uh, I don't agree with him flying out, especially regularly, especially for his private business. Yeah, I mean, what time we have, we have to be outside the country? Yeah, when <laughs> because because my problems, yeah, even just within the country, flying to his private property yeah. every week, I wouldn't agree with that. Yeah, yeah. yeah giving a bankrupt uh, company our minerals, I wouldn't agree with that. Hmm. Wait, I don't agree with uh, giving our our minerals to, to companies like Vedanta. Yeah. But that's another story on its own. Yeah. But to me, uh, this shows because we're just from showing Gary Combo when he was in opposition. Yeah. And this woman is now in opposition, so to say. Because for me, it's hard to say she's in opposition. Always because, been, always will be. Yeah, go on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, because this is, and their party has been going down the drain. Yeah. We have got new parties that perform better than a party. Exactly. That's a story for another day. This shows us the kind of leader that FTD has. On top of that, it shows us the kind of leaders that we had. We have. Because this person was uh, part of the MMD at some point. Mm. She used to be a great woman. Mm. This was the first uh, female minister of finance, yeah. if I haven't mistaken. So, you know, she's supposed to be a great woman. Mm. At this point, she's supposed to actually be a stateswoman. When she speaks, people are supposed to be listening. Mm. Now she's standing here and she's politicking. Much as Gary yeah. Combo was politicking. When er was erroneously preaching the word of God to us. Yeah, and yeah. erroneously. <laughs> and now you can see that she's aging. Huh? Yeah. I know we're all getting there. Struggling to lift her hand up as she said. No, no. We should look up to God. <laughs> 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 that is my friend it's not me <laughs> yeah anyway she's growing and you know as you grow I thought that you are supposed to be thinking of a legacy that you are going to leave on this earth now if as you are growing are you suggesting what I think you're suggesting what's that that she's about to kick oh, everyone is going <laughs> everyone is going my friend <laughs> even <laughs> us sometimes at some point we are going in fact she's lucky that uh, she's uh, she's odd <laughs> Mr. Nawako, we are enjoying our last moments with you. Don't take offense. <laughs> no, don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Nawako, please, we need you to live long so that you may make some amends. Because your legacy was starting out very well. Young woman, you know, charismatic and very smart. You should have ended that Legana sausage while the stage was still Yes, happy. very uh, avid uh, businesswoman. 
Mm, sausage, now, sausage ya mulinganya. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, by the way, enjoy the Ghana sausage. <laughs> but now she has reached a point where she's just playing petty politics. Yeah. We see her alone do rabantu akonka konka bantu ali once. You find her muuka, you find her here. She's got no substance, she's got nothing. Yeah. She's got no numbers. No, but quite, quite frankly, in fact, if she stopped, what would she do with her life? If she? If she stopped. She, she could be running Legana thing. <laughs> Legana meets. <laughs> you see, to me, actually, she's speaking like this because this is coming from a point of someone who's beat. Yeah. Who's uh, Wamena Kalipa to say that HH and uh, the Hatembos have dragged her to court. Yeah. <laughs> yes. She's... Mm. Oh, so Mazambe, because she knows that some of us are reading the court documents, mm. some of us are reading the news, mm. and we are hearing the how she was threatening people Which with knives. As, as the story pro- progresses, we might uh, also make you privy to. Uh, yes. Yeah, just yes, so you can be yes. aware. Yes, I hope we do that. Mm. Yeah. So, you know, this is the kind of leadership that we have. And, you know, because these are the old folks, they are supposed to be inspiring the younger people, the mm. younger generation. Mm. But what I see now, there's nothing inspirational about this. All I see is a politician who is in opposition trying to badmouth everything or everyone who is uh, in leadership right now in government. Mm. And it does not help any bit. These are the leaders who are supposed to sit down and say, oh, in MMD, we actually saw this before. This drought that you are seeing, we saw something similar. Mm. This cholera, we saw something similar. This is how we went about it. Mm. Instead, she's sitting here and saying that uh, HH is evil and uh, us who are in his community are being punished because of his evilness. By the Lord God. <laughs> wow. Way yeah. to bring the Lord into this. <laughs> <laughs> but Lord Shedding, Mutaira <laughs> Konzeru, Especially by UPND government. Because load shedding, Tezoziva, Tizankala, Kuma, what the You saw that we're having a drought. Why can you jump to eight hours, honestly? <laughs> yeah, uh, anyway, before the power cuts, we need to end the show. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think about the show? It was good. Good show? Yeah, it was good. And a lot shading in it. I know, I know. Yeah, but anyway, on a lighter note, at least you say one kungu met kachoka pan just in a cheese. People won't be looking at us like eh, in a way. People will be like, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but at least it, it usually is a national thing, like, oh, you haven't tired too. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, anyway, if you're not subscribed, please do subscribe. Uh, hit that bell and share. Again, we are grateful to every single subscriber that has joined us on this on this channel. Um, please do get subscribing. Help the channel grow. I know you love the content that you see here. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, so if you want to keep seeing better and better and better and longer content, mm-hmm. then you might do well to subscribe also do check out the other segments of the show we have a lot of stuff for you guys to catch up on all the way back to our first videos when we didn't really know how to do this thing yeah. but yeah <laughs> our monday show is a comedy show so yeah. you guys are so chubby watch the the bible talks and then you learn a few things very serious no smiles <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um we'll see you on the next one and bye hey like what you see i know you do Hit the button below to subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell. Ciao!